having a laser in your shop opens up so many different possibilities and the detail that you're able to achieve is just outstanding. And when you combine that with the CNC machine to be able to do the various projects, the possibilities are virtually limitless. And today I want to be able to go in and explore some of these possibilities doing these projects. Hi, welcome to Papa's Workshop. You know, it's a fun day in the shop today. I'm having a great time with the laser and the CNC machine. And today I want to be able to answer some big questions that you guys have had. Mainly, I want to talk about the Lightburn software and specifically the text on a line. Had a lot of questions about that. Also, over in the easel software, people continue to ask about the keyhole slots and just how to make it work. So I'm going to touch on that again today and a whole lot more. So stick around. This is going to be a fun day. So let's get started. In the recent videos that I've done, I stopped asking for people to be able to like, subscribe, and share the video. And those algorithms just plummeted. So please, I'm going to ask again if you would help me out to be able to drive the algorithms. And if you're new to the channel, by all means, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you can be notified of the various uh, videos that I upload. And please like and share this. When you like the video, it helps to drive those algorithms to be able to get this video out to all kinds of different people everywhere. So please help me out by subscribing, like, and share this video. So let's get back to today's project. Now this is going to start off at the table saw and to cut these signs, I need three pieces that are 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. And the reason that it's 11 and a quarter is that's the width of the 1 by 12 that I'm using and I want this to be square. So I have the stop block set up on my table saw sled and I'm just going to go ahead and cut all three of these blanks. Now just a quick note, if you haven't added the dust collection on your table saw sled, you might want to consider that because if you look at this, I have virtually no sawdust at all coming out and being scattered all over the shop. This dust collection system works fantastic. Okay, with all three blanks now cut, I want to go ahead and mark this center point. For the laser, as well as the CNC machine, I'm going to use my XY0 position in the center. And again, this is another question that people often will have. They still continue to ask questions that you must use the bottom left hand corner and I'll always answer the same. No, you don't. And in this case, today I'm using the center position to be able to use both the laser and the CNC machine. And all I do is just take the straight edge and measure the diagonal and mark the X right there in the center. And that's what I'm going to use for all three of these signs. I do the laser work first. And what I need for this is just two bump stops in place to be able to act as registration points so that I can put each of these sign blanks in at a time and have the same exact position for my XY0. And all that really takes is just a couple of bump stops and that will do it. Now let's head over to the Lightburn software and let's take a look at that. Now if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I use Lightburn for all of the engraving. The nice thing about it is it's a very, very easy software to be able to learn and it is very capable of doing just about any type of the design that you want and it's easy to be able to make changes to it. Let me show you what I mean by that. One of the nice things that I like about the Lightburn is that one, you've got the original file that you can save and then you can come in and change whatever you want in here. Now I have a black circle all the way around here that's right in the center. So when I want to change something, all I have to do is just highlight this. I can backspace this out and then I can type in the new word.
Now I also want to get rid of this part. And then from here, all I need to do is come right up to this point and I can increase the size of this until it fits right into that space. And that is just how easy it is. Now to be able to engrave this as a fill because my green is set for fill, all I need to be able to do is highlight this portion and change it to green. And now it will engrave at the same time. The black line, I do not want. That is just a guideline. So all I need to do is come over and not even, I have it checked as no output and I can even turn it off so you can't see it. So that makes it extremely easy to be able to change a project. And then you just save it under the different name. Now I have three of these to do today. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and save this. And then, now that that is saved, I want to go ahead and open up the next one. And I'm going to select this one right here. And I do want to save it. And now I have the major crimes unit. And I did it exactly the same way. I just typed it in, sized it so it would fit, and I'm ready to be able to engrave. Now that I've shown you how to do it in real life on the project, let me show you how you can apply the text to the path. And I've opened up a new window so I can work with this. And you need to do two things. We're going to need a line. In this case, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a uh, oval. And then we're going to need to be able to get the text. So I'm going to highlight that. And I'm just going to put in here, uh, this is a test. Well, there we have it. Now that I have these items, and I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight just this, and I'm going to make it, uh, let's make it red so that you can see it, and I'm going to make it as a fill, and that way it's going to be easy to be able to see. And then you've already got the line, or in this case, an oval. So now what I want to do is just highlight this entire area to capture both of these, my line as well as my text. Then I'm going to come right up here to the top under the tools, highlight that, and then right down here in the middle, it says apply path to the text. So I can highlight that, and there it is. The nice thing about this now, I can go ahead and grab this little handle, and I can turn this around. And I can bring it right up to the top. Now, once I'm at this point, I can really manipulate this and do anything that I want with it. I can spread it out. And something else, I can take this if I don't want it on the top. You saw at the very beginning where it was on the side. But let's say I want it on the bottom. So all I really need to do is just grab the handle right down here, switch this over, and now it's on the bottom. Or I can literally put this anywhere that I want it. Same thing if I have this on the side and I decide that I want it on the other side, just bring it over. And I'm going to stretch this back out. And there we go. And we can put this anywhere that we want along our circle. So this is a very handy tool to be able to have. It's easy to be able to work with. And I love this feature. Now I want to go ahead and show you with a line. I can take and just put different nodes in wherever I want them on a line. And I'll just end it right there. Now I'm going to go back and select my arrow. And then I can select the both of the features. Come up to my Tools tab and apply Path to the text. Now, the nice thing about this, I can grab the node edit menu section and then I can take these nodes and I can move this around anywhere that I want. So you can have a lot of fun with this and move it around, stretch it out, pull it and do all kinds of things with it. This is a great feature to be able to have. So that's how 
you'd be able to use this tool to be able to apply a path to the text. Works great, and you can see in how I use it in real world. Now, the other thing that I can do too, I have the opportunity to turn the bold on, or I can turn it off. I can highlight this area, and then I can turn the bold on or off, whatever I think looks the best. And I actually think having the bold on looks better for this one. So I'm going to leave that just as it is. And I'm ready to be able to engrave this now. Now I have my green dot right here in the center. And that is going to be my XY0 position. So I'm going to go ahead and get the laser set up now on the X carve and be able to engrave this. Now I want to verify this information over here. All of the green is going to be the fill. And I'm doing this at 80 inches per minute. So it is outputting and it is showing everything. The other thing, the black circle that I had showed you earlier, there is no output for that. And I also have that turned off so it's not showing it. The red is just for the line only. And that is going to be right for that center for the pelican to be able to get that very fine detail. And that is set up at 50 inches per minute. And I think I'm going to change that and go up to the 60 inches per minute. So I can just select it right there, type in 60, and that is done. It's just that easy. Now this is set to do one pass. So we're all done with the adjustments that I want to make. Setting up the laser is actually very easy to do. This just slips right on. And I put it right up to this point. I'll go ahead and attach the laser to it. And then just plug it in. The cord itself, I have a little Velcro strap that I just put right here, wrap it around, and the cord is secure. So I'm ready to be able to engrave. Now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and move this over to the center position. And this is the only board that I actually needed to put the X in the center because this will return to that home position each time. And I can literally just slide the board out and slide the next one in and change the file and it's ready to go first thing i'm going to do is just take my gauge and i'm going to set this to the z axis for it to be on the zero position okay that is set now so we'll get that out of the way and now I want to move, and I can hit the fire button, and I can be able to place this laser directly on my XY0 position. Now with that fire button selected, it's shooting a very small laser beam directly at my XY0 position. And I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but that's right on my cross hairs for the line that I made with the pencil. So that is now set. So the only thing left to do is go ahead and hit the start button. And at this point, the laser will begin working and it begins on the first layer, which was the red layer. And that was the inner circle that was producing the line only to be able to get that very fine detail for the pelican. Now the other thing that I really like about having the JTEC Photonics laser on the uh, CNC machine is that it is very quiet. A lot of people have asked, they say, hey, I have the CNC machine in a uh, apartment or a complex where noise is an issue. Well, running the laser is very quiet. You will not disturb any neighbors if you're using the laser to be able to engrave. Now the pelican itself is done and you can see it's starting to create this circle around the pelican. This actually is not necessary. and. If I had remembered, I would have gone ahead and deleted it. 
because there is the green line that's going to create the fill and actually cover that up. So it's really not necessary. Now I want to be able to zoom in real close and if you look closely you can see the green line and right next to it you can also see the red line. And this is where I had started the laser and I'm three minutes into the engraving. The pelican's already done. But look just above the state of Louisiana and you can see that red line. I've been wanting to take that out and delete it and I keep forgetting. I'm going to have to do that one of these days pretty soon. Okay, this one is just about finished and you can look and see the detail. It looks absolutely amazing. And again, this is one of the best things that I like about the laser because you can get this fine detail that you just cannot get with the CNC machine alone. Now, people often ask also, how long does it take to be able to engrave this particular sign with this type of detail in it? And what I did at the uh, end, the timer does go on the Lightburn software and you can see that it has taken right at about 146 minutes and it's right at the very end. Now here's a look at all three of the signs finished and the only difference is there's the title in that top box and it only takes less than a minute to be able to change those names and have it ready to be able to engrave. What a fantastic tool. I want to put the keyhole slot in next and I'm going to do it horizontal. And I have this one set up in easel already. But the important thing about this is that I've had a lot of questions. So I want to be able to show you this. The bit that I'm using, I need to be able to go into the wood at a 0.26 of an inch. So I have that set at the depth that I'm going to be cutting this. Now the key to making the keyhole slot work is the actual cut settings. You have to be able to have the depth per pass at the same exact depth. So I have this at 0.26 of an inch. The idea behind it is it's going to be at your center point right here. It is going to come across, go straight down to the full depth, cut this, come back, and then exit out and return to the home position. And if I do the simulate, you can see that. You can see the red line where it leaves the XY0 position and it comes over and goes straight down and into the wood and then back out. So that's the whole idea behind it and that has caused a lot of people a lot of problems. Let me show you on the CNC machine where the XY0 position is and then how I got to this point. As far as my XY0 position, that is going to be right at this point. And that will give me the most accurate cut. Now I'm measuring down three inches from the top. I have this located right in the center. Now I said I had this saved in a workpiece and this is it right down here. And that's the workpiece. Now this makes it where I can use this over and over. And then up on the screen itself, is the actual project. Now you notice I just showed you on the actual CNC where the bit was and it was right at my XY0 position. This was my line. This is my dot. This is the home position. So if I have my bit on the CNC lined up right at this point, that becomes my XY0 position. And I can't tell you how many questions that I've had about that. And it's going to carve just fine. It can carve in the blue area. If I come over here and I hit simulate, you can see exactly, I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. You can see where it's going to be right at the XY0 position and it's going to move along this red line. That's where it's not cutting anything. And then it'll go straight down. It's going to go right over this direction and then it'll come back and then exit out. And then it will return back to the XY0 home position. Now this is one of the keyhole bits that I have. 
And I do have other ones that I will use also. But the thing that I like about this one is it has these index points. And what I typically do is I use this one. And this one from the surface right up here to this index point is 0.26 of an inch. And that gives me this much distance to be able to actually support the uh, screw that goes into the wall. So that's plenty. But if you needed more, I mean, here's another reference point that you could use. So that's a nice feature on this bit. All bits don't have it. And just to show you, this bit does not have those reference points. So what you would need to do is measure down from this tip down to a distance somewhere along in here to be able to get the depth. And that still is going to be approximately 0.26 of an inch, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But this is the cutting surface here, as well as this area. Same on this other bit. This is all a cutting surface along here, as well as this area. So this is what the keyhole bit actually looks like. And this is why I'm using on mine the 0.26 of an inch right here as my reference point to be able to get the proper depth. To be able to show you how I got to this point, I want to go ahead for this demonstration purposes and open up a brand new workpiece. And then I'm going to come right up over here on the left hand side on this menu and I'm going to select under apps. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the keyhole generator, which is right here. So I'm going to highlight that. And then from there, you can select. Now here is a graphic representation of that keyhole slot. And you have one, you can do multiple. If you want two of them, you could do two and they could be going in this direction. You can also change it and have it go on the vertical. So you can do it on the vertical, you can do it on the horizontal. So what I'm gonna do is stay with the vertical. I'm also gonna put this in as one. And then my depth, I'm gonna go ahead and set that right here at 0.26 of an inch. And then the length of a cut, I can make this as long as I want, but I think I'm gonna make this 1.5 inches. The spacing doesn't matter because there's only one. Then I'll import that into my uh, workpiece. So here it is. Now, to be able to get it down to this point, all I need to do, guys, is just highlight this, come up here to my shape, put this into this button right there for the center, and then I'm going to set my X and my Y to zero. Now that brings it right down to this point. Now the other thing that I want to be able to do to be able to set it up exactly the way the other workpiece is, all I need to do is rotate this 90 degrees. There we have it. And you can see right here, that's how it looks. To be able to simulate this, there's the same exact thing. It starts at my X, Y, zero position, comes over, goes straight down, and does the actual cutting of the keyhole slot. Exit back out the same hole and returns back to my XY0 position. This keyhole generator is a fantastic app that is in Easel and I love it. And once you have that done, as I have done with my work pieces down here, I save this and I can use it over and over. Now, let's get back to today's project and show you the actual carving of that keyhole slot. The other thing that you really want to be able to do is have this secured because there's a lot of force that's put on this. So I'm gonna have the bump stops on both sides and then I have my reference up top. So that way, all I'll need to do is just pull this board out and slide the next one in to be able to continue to carve. So I have this one 
where I want to set it. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this down. And I want this so that I can just slide it in and out. The pressure that I'm going to have is going to be on the lateral side. It's not going to be on any other direction. Now I had removed this screw from a couple of projects before where I actually had another bump stop mounted on top of this. All right, so that holds it in place. Now I don't want it to lift up at all because this is going to plunge straight down, come across, and it'll come back and pull up. So because of that, I don't want to take a chance of having this wood lift up. So I am going to put a couple of clamps on here just as a little bit of an insurance factor to be able to keep it in position. Now I have the two hold down clamps on the outside also. That way when I get ready to change it, I just loosen it. I can still slide this board out and slide a new one in and then just reclamp this real easy. So this is now well secured and I'm ready to test this. So the Z probe is now complete. So the Z axis is set. My X, Y, zero point is set. So I'm actually ready to carve now. just slips out and we can look at that and that looks fantastic so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the real ones on now of course you want to make sure that you've got it right side up so it's going to be cutting this way on the back so that slides in So that's in place. I'll put my hold downs back on. There's no reason to set the X, Y, zero position because it's already done. So I'm ready to be able to carve again. A lot of people have asked, do I need to re-Z the, the axis each time I chain from one to the next? And in my shop, yes, I do. Now, is it absolutely necessary? I'm not sure because I've never tried it any other way. I want to make 100% sure that the z-axis is exactly where it's going to be and I'm not going to have any surprises when I carve. So for that reason, although I don't need to change the x-y position, I do z the axis each time. Again, I'll check to make sure that I have it originally correctly and I'll slide that in. Make sure it's all the way up in that position reclamp it and ready to go again people often say well it's going to take too much time to do the z probe well it really doesn't take but just a few seconds to be able to do it and it gives me the peace of mind to know that it's exactly where it needs to be now i'm doing this in real time so you can see it really doesn't take a whole lot of time at all to be able to do this z probe now, my question to you would be, what happens if I didn't do it and it was set incorrectly and ruined the project? The time wasted for that would be a whole lot more than just a few seconds that it takes to do the Z-probe here. And then we can go ahead and continue on with 100% surety that I know that it's set correctly and it's going to perform the way I expect it to. And there you go. This one's done also. You know, it really doesn't get much easier than this. And the last one. Now that part's done. Next thing we got to do is just cut out the outside of this. 
Now I went ahead and put the new workpiece back in. I have it oriented correctly. And I went ahead and moved the machine over after changing the bit to the eighth inch straight bit to align it directly over my X, Y, zero position. So this is actually set now. Now the machine doesn't know it yet because I, when I go through the checklist, I'll have to check that box when I get to it. But this will be exactly in the location because it's not gonna move. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start to carve. We're gonna raise this up, do the Z probe, and then go ahead and do the cutout. So the Z probe is complete. The next thing that it asks is to make sure that the Z probe is put away and then it asks me to set the X, Y, zero position. So here you can see it on the computer screen. So the Z probe is put away and now set the X, Y, zero position. I have it set. So all I need to do is just select this and that locks it into place. And now I'll turn the spindle on and begin to carve. Now this took a little bit less than 15 minutes to be able to cut this out. Not bad. Now I was started out at 40 inches a minute and that was just the default setting. And I increased the speed up to 80 inches a minute and it did just fine. The only thing I want to do in between the cars is just to be able to clean up a little bit and make sure that there's no dust in the way because that little bit of dust will raise up your project and it'll change how it cuts. So now I'll go ahead and slide the next one in and with the three bump stops the registration portion is correct and it's exactly where it needs to be. And of course the XY zero position hasn't moved at all. So once I get this clamped down I'll be able to move the machine right back over to the position and I'll be ready to carve. Okay all I need to do now I'm moving the machine back to the XY zero position. The only thing is, I did not show the Z probe, but yes, of course, I did do the Z probe, and now I'm ready to begin the carve. So this is how I do the production runs, and it makes it where the time that it takes to build a chain from one to the, to the uh, next project is really minimal amount of time. It's just how you get organized to be able to keep the process going and that flow moving. The whole idea is that you want to keep the machine running and you want to keep it carving because anytime that it's not moving then you're wasting time. So your process may be a little bit different in your shop but bottom line do what works best for you to be able to minimize the time loss. I know in my shop time is a very very big priority. I have very little of it and it's very precious to me. So I want to be able to maximize every bit of time that I can to be able to complete the project without having a lot of downtime when the machine's not running. So experiment with it in your shop to be able to see if you can increase your productivity. This is just one way that works for me. And I'm sure there's many other ways out there that you guys have that works well in your shops. The last thing that I like to be able to do is on the back side, put the logo of the Pawpaw's Workshop down at the bottom. This is also real easy. All I have to do is slide one out, slide the other one in, 
don't have to worry about the bump stop. There's actually marks on the table that works real well for this. Well, this was a fun project to do today, and I hope it answered a lot of questions that people have had. So if you liked the video, please remember, hit that subscribe button and that little bell for the notification, along with the like. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching.